Welcome back to PNG Trends Burner. The stakes are high in the Papua New Guinea Parliament as the vote of no confidence, VONC, has successfully passed the main barrier, the Parliamentary Private Business Committee. This is the fifth notice of VONC, four were blocked in the June July session, but one has made it through in the September session. Here is the Speaker's announcement on September 4th. Private Business Committee, we'd like to sit down on this floor. Notice floor. Uh, vote of no confidence for Prime Minister. Committee go through long and I mean, it looks out that there was something I mean, right? Long. This law motion or of no confidence for Prime Minister, I mean, order for Senator Mr. Clark. Notice of motion. Mr. Douglas Tumereza, member for Kiriwana, good enough. Moves that this parliament has no confidence in the Prime Minister and member for Tari Op. Tari for your open electorate, Mr. James Marape, MP, and nominates the member for Fitzhaven Open Electorate, Mr. Renbrook Paita, MP, to be elected Prime Minister of the Independent State of Papua New Guinea. Clark, I mean, reading finish this plus or tomorrow, that's a uh, motion. I mean, start the notice paper, so Clark, by me, talk out, look at me, notice the house, look tomorrow. So, what happens now? The Parliament will recess for a minimum of seven days, during which lobbying for the Prime Minister's position will intensify. Earlier this week, three MPs indicated their intentions to leave the government, more details can be found in the linked video. As lobbying heats up, movements will occur on both sides of the House, involving both the opposition and the government. The opposition has set up camp at the isolated Loloata Island, just outside of Port Moresby, with Rainbow Pida as their alternate Prime Minister nominee. The government has yet to reveal their camping venue, but the public will know when the government goes to camp. Interestingly, Loloata was previously the government's base camp but has now been strategically taken over by the opposition. Is this a small win? Perhaps, as the opposition will celebrate their minor victories, including securing a favorable camping ground and the success of the VONC motion. Additionally, three MPs left government last week suggested that all is not well within the ranks of the Marapi Rosso, Pangalad government. Reflecting on the current situation, the James Marapi government boasts a strong 70 MPs from Pangu Paddy. Will Pangu, the Marapi Rosso stronghold, remain solid? The fact of the matter is that if Pangu breaks again, the Marapi government is gone. Also, some government ministers have shown a lack of confidence in Marapi's leadership. Dr. Lino Tom, leader of the People's Party and whose founder is the powerful anger governor Peter Ipadas, recently resigned from his position as health minister in the Pangu-led Marapi Rosso government. Smaller parties led by Paus Parkop and William Juma are part of the government's base, yet the solidity of these numbers remains to be seen during the seven-day lobbying period. There are also one-man parties and independent MPs who may shift allegiances like leaves in the wind. One thing for sure is that the alternate government has presented their policy platform to transform PNG from its current status quo. The opposition also has in its ranks a former prime minister, a former deputy prime minister, elite MPs, and seasoned politicians. So, what happens next? Two key events are happening next week. First, Prime Minister James Marapi is expecting the arrival of the Pope. As a matter of protocol, both the Governor-General and the Prime Minister must be present for the Pope's arrival on September 6 and departure on September 9, 2024. Second, the Prime Minister has promised to respond to the UPNG students' four-point petition on September 9, 2024. He will need to leave the government camp to address the students as promised, with no excuses. Looking back at the vote of no confidence in 2019, it was initially scheduled for seven days. However, after the motion was tabled, the VONC voting session was extended to 21 days by the Parliamentary Privilege Committee. On May 28, 2019, the final voting session took place. Support from the Pangu Party, opposition MPs, and defecting PNC members led to the successful passing of the motion, resulting in Peter O'Neill's removal as Prime Minister. Marapia's election to the PM's position was based on the MP's belief that he was a better option compared to his predecessor, Peter O'Neill, as described by Dr. Lino and Brian Kramer in this video. The mandate we have is given to us by the people, and currently there seem to be widespread disenchantment on the streets. A lot of things in this country are not happening well, so I've decided that because of that I've sort of felt 
our government has lost uh, its legitimacy. So I've decided to resign from uh, uh, from the cabinet and I've decided to resign from the Maraparoso government. Um, like I said, the reasons are many. Um, institutions of states have been desecrated to a level where now uh, no longer do their constitutional functions. Their instruments used by the masters who are in charge. And uh, I've realized that uh, political survival has actually become, uh, you know, the most important thing today and not the interest of the nation. So my resignation is like a protest, open protest, and I hopefully uh, Prime Minister Marape uh, takes into consideration. And obviously, uh, the country is actually going down. There's a general uh, moral and societal decadence being, uh, you know, being observed today. Mediocrity, insanity, and tyranny are actually espoused and celebrated. Because of those things, we, uh, I decided to resign. Uh, for me, it was a moral one. Um, in 2019, we both joined the Marape uh, government. We were both appointed ministers. We were both in the opposition. And for me, the decision to support Marape at the time was because he, of his, I considered him a man of faith, uh, keeping the Sabbath, and believing that he would be guided in his decisions uh, by moral principles, Christian values, and in service of the Lord. And over the years, unfortunately, I got to see firsthand that he had lost his way. And decisions weren't being made on Christian values, moral principles, it appeared to be made on political convenience. Seeing firsthand and having been sitting in the highest <coughs> institution, NEC, and then seeing many reckless decisions being made, uh, hundreds of millions of Kina public funds being spent uh, recklessly, misapplied, um, and seeing the state of our economy, price of goods going up, the level of viciousness in the community, human decency, fast deteriorating. Uh, our country is set on a pathway where it's a race to the bottom. So the only way it was to resign and basically take a position and hopefully the government will take note, the Prime Minister, and start to correct some of those decisions. The Marape government has been grossly inept when it comes to implementing the budget. Using its tools of selective warranting, it has weaponized the budget and the Prime Minister is in the business of choosing what member of parliament gets what, how much, and when. This is completely unheard of. It has never happened before in the history of the country when the Prime Minister treats the Treasury like a tucker box and uses the nefarious tool of selective warranting to slice and dice the budget at whim to manage, placate, and appease members of parliament based on political affiliation. This is despicable and it is illegal. This is not principal leadership, but desperate abuse of public monies for self-preservation. It augurs disaster for Papua New Guinea. In a true spirit of democracy, the interest of the people must remain paramount. The measure of a government's ability to prioritize the people's interest is tested over time. Marapi has had five years to prove himself. Has he demonstrated his worthiness to serve the people's interest until 2027? This question will be answered through the outcome of the VONC. What do you think, if the government change, does the PNG opposition has what it takes to change the current status quo in the country? Thank you for watching. Subscribe to PNG Trends Burner for updates on trends and topics in PNG politics.